Today we are checking out this Dell laptop from the mid 2010s that is having some issues charging up the battery. Now I've actually had this same issue before with this particular laptop, it was a couple of years back, and it turned out to be that the charging cable had a break in the wire going to the sense pin which is located in the middle of the barrel plug. This basically tells the laptop, hey, I'm connected to a genuine Dell charger and this is how much power the charger can output. So I thought I had the same issue again and ended up replacing that cable for the second time, but still the laptop refuses to charge. Now it still does function with the power cable connected, so you can still use it as a laptop. It's just not gonna charge the battery. And when you first start it up, you'll get an error screen that looks something like this. And if we go into the setup, and head over to battery information, you can see that it says AC adapter unknown. So it's not detecting that it's connected to a genuine Dell charger and therefore it doesn't want to charge the battery. So what I ended up doing was buying a second charger. This is pretty much the exact same one that I already had and it still doesn't want to charge the battery. So the issue doesn't appear to be with the charger itself. There's something going on inside this laptop. Now these chargers have a little tiny EEPROM chip. It's like a SOT23, so very small package. A small dick's like a disability, man. And that basically sends out a little serial packet that contains the charger information that the laptop then recognizes and says, okay, cool, I'm connected to a real charger. So I thought in the case of my original charger that that chip may have died, but uh, having another charger on hand, it appears not to be the case. So let's get this thing opened up, see if we can figure out why it's not working. So it looks like we have a number of Phillips head screws on the bottom, so let's just pull them out. I have opened up this laptop in the past, but uh, to be honest, I don't remember how to disassemble it because it was a few years ago. So we're just going to plow ahead with removing screws. All right, it looks like there's a little notch up the top, so I think we can get a screwdriver in there. And that bottom plate just lifts off. That's nice and easy. Oh yes, yeah, so I put some extra RAM in here and an SSD. It's kind of nice that, you know, all this stuff is easily accessible. So our charger port uh, is up here and it looks like that connects straight to the motherboard just there. So first thing to do would be just to make sure there's not a break in this connection somewhere. And I think if we remove this, yep, yeah, it's just like a little retaining clip should be able to pull this thing straight out. All right, so it looks like it just has five wires, two black, two red, and one gray. So I'm guessing ground, our positive power supply, and our sense pin is on the gray wire. Let's just use the original power supply that I had because I didn't bother trying to seal this thing back up when I realized it wasn't working. And we can just make sure that the sense pin from this plug is making it to this gray wire and to this connector. So I'm just gonna stick a component lead in this plug here and that'll just give me easy access to the gray connection and I'm pretty sure it goes to that spot right there. So yes, there is definitely not a break in this cable or this little power jack connector thing. So I guess the next thing could be that connector there. So let's disconnect the battery just so we don't accidentally short something out. I'm pretty sure it should just slide out somehow. So it's this pin up here and just looking at the board, I don't see any traces coming off it. So it may go through a via and somewhere else on the board. Uh, I don't know, maybe it just goes up here. All right, 20, 24 ohms, that is not a direct connection. So it appears to go up here somewhere, but um, well, yeah, 24 ohms is definitely not a short, so it doesn't go directly there. Oh, maybe it goes to this chip here. It's gonna be hard to see, but there is a tiny little IC under here. All right, we're still getting, well, 23 ohms. I wonder, so if I put the probe here where the ground connection from the power jack would be and the other probe on the sense pin, yeah, we get 24 ohms. So there's only 24 ohms between that pin and ground. That doesn't seem right. So it does seem like something has developed a short, well, 24 ohm short. So um, yeah, we're gonna have to try and find that thing. Hopefully it's gonna be obvious once we manage to reveal some more of this board. 
So I'm just going to start pulling out screws, I guess. Uh, probably should start with the battery. Hmm. Well, that, that was easy. Yeah, it's a little bit dirty. This laptop actually lives out in our lounge room, so uh, it's probably full of pet hair. I'm just going to keep pulling out screws until we get somewhere. I guess, uh, yeah, we have to remove all these flex cables. Uh, let's pop out the RAM, make sure there's nothing special under there. Hmm. There's a random label floating around. Dell copyright 2014. Yeah, sounds about right for the year of this thing. It'd be nice if there were schematics available or something. Betcha there's not though. Do I need to pop out that Wi-Fi card? Maybe. And disconnect its little antennas. Just use something with a bit of grip. There we go. Are they hiding screws under this keyboard plate? I guess that's the next thing to check. Oh, I just noticed there's little notches up the top there. That's probably where you're supposed to start lifting this thing. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Pet hair everywhere. I guess it gives me the opportunity to clean this thing out as well. Uh, there are a couple of screws here, so looks like that holds the keyboard in. And one of those connectors on the back would have been for the keyboard, I guess. So we should be able to lift this out. And hopefully with that, I should now be able to take out this keyboard assembly. It should just lift out with a bit of persuasion. Right, gotcha. Ah, yeah, that needs a good clean. Okay, now we should actually be able to remove this plastic piece holding the top cover on. Uh, probably need to disconnect all these little flex cables first. And there's two more screws, or one more screw, two more screws, 10 more screws, three, three screws. Right, let's see. Haha. -ha. Cool. Uh, I might also take this screen off because it is very top heavy now. All right. Well, it's incredibly light now. So our charge port is located over here. There's the connector. So that probably comes through the board right here and straight away, this little transistor or whatever it is, doesn't look too happy. This little guy here appears to have sustained some damage. It's got a black spot on the top of it. Let's get that under the microscope, take a closer look. It looks like whatever it was, the uh, part number on it has completely melted off. Uh, if we look at one next to it, that's what it probably should look like. You can see these other guys around here. But um, yeah, that doesn't look good. What's a bet that that is cooked and we're going to have a short circuit there. Yep, we're seeing that 23 ohms, uh, which is slightly lower than what we had before, which means we're probably on the right track. I'm going to try and remove this little transistor or IC. Let's see if we can get that off and see if our short goes away. I'm just going to flood it with a little bit of solder. That should be enough to free it. Or so I had hoped it is not budging. Looks like we will get the hot air onto it.
All right, I'm just gonna place that on top of the multimeter screen. Hopefully I'll remember that it's there. Watch me lose it shortly. Quiet. Let's see if we've still got our short. We do not. And if we flip the board over, we had a short between our sense pin and ground. Well, at least 24 ohms. And yep, we do not have a short anymore. We have 112 kilo ohms. That sounds a little bit more like it. So I foolishly suspected that it was the charger. And um, well, last time it was the charger. So that's why I just assumed that it was the charger once again, but not this time. Let's just clean up this area. So it looks like that part was labeled PD5. Uh, whether I can find out what it's supposed to be and then if I can get a replacement, who knows? So let me do some Googling. All right, well, that was easier than I thought. I actually managed to find the schematics for this board, which is an LAA911P on the Bad Caps forum. Somebody has uploaded it. So uh, looking at the schematic, things start to make a whole lot more sense. And thankfully it is searchable. So just looking for PD5, we come across the SOT233 package and it also has the part number. It turns out this thing is a TVS diode or transient voltage suppressor. So it all makes a lot more sense now. This is designed to clamp the voltage in case of some kind of voltage surge or static discharge. And given that this laptop normally lives out in the lounge room and normally sits on the couch half the time, it's probably succumbed to some kind of static discharge or possibly the old cable that I had on this power supply that I've already replaced uh, may have had a short in it as well. Basically this thing did its job. It must have suffered some kind of surge and it just burnt out in the process, which is what can happen with these. Uh, but at least it probably protected anything else further down the line. So yeah. So I can actually get away with leaving this out of circuit. It's not gonna provide any protection obviously because there's nothing installed in there, but it should allow me to at least charge up the battery in this laptop and I can also order a replacement part, which I found on AliExpress, but obviously that's gonna take some time to arrive. Alternatively, I found a part on Mauser that has very similar specs, uh, but unfortunately ordering from Mauser in Australia, uh, the freight is pretty expensive unless you're spending 60 bucks or more. And uh, this part is 63 cents. So it looks like I'll be opening this thing up again in the near future, but right now uh, I'm just gonna reassemble it and see if it works. All right, laptop has been reassembled. So let's plug this thing in, see what happens. Fingers crossed it doesn't explode. And I'm gonna use the charger that I recently purchased just in case the original charger still has an issue. I don't particularly wanna connect it without any protection. So we've got a little light on the front, so the charger does seem to be working. Let's see if we get any errors. Let's see if we get anything at all. Oh, here we go. Had me worried for a second. Oh, it looks like it's just gonna boot straight into Windows, so does appear that it's not having that error with the charger anymore. We'll see if it's actually charging up the battery in a second. And yes, it does appear that it is charging. Uh, one hour and 45 minutes to full charge. So yes, the battery charge circuit is now working again. Uh, obviously I'm still gonna order that part because now it's basically unprotected from any future shocks. But uh, I think we might just leave this video here. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be that exciting installing the new part. Pretty sure you know how that goes. So um, that is it for this one. A massive thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. And uh, thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing. And I'll be sure to leave links of everything that I referenced in the video description in case you're having similar issues. That's it. Bye. Sweet.